As we come, dear God, we present this afternoon in your hand. We pray for your leading and direction as we go into Bible study. We pray for a special covering upon everyone who will join, those who will be here physically as well as those who are joining us online. Lord, we come presenting our brother in your hands. We pray that you'll touch him right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, touch Brother Hind and his wife. Lord God, you are able to touch his lung and you are able to change the, the viscosity of the fluid in his lung so that he'll be able to absorb oxygen. And even now, God, it has been reported that his oxygen levels are low. I pray, dear God, that you will take control. Touch his wife now, God. Minister to her, Lord God. And we're placing them in your hands, Lord Jesus. And even now, we need a miracle. You are a miracle working, God. Nothing is too hard for you. And so I pray that you will cover them right now in your precious name. Other persons who might be online, Lord, who are not well in body are here physically. We pray that you will minister to them, Lord Jesus. We recognize the day in which we are living that we need to be careful how we live. And whatever we're doing, God, we need to observe the different protocols. And dear God, help us to be wise. Even as the Delta variant is here, Lord Jesus, help us, Lord, to be very conscious how we go about. Oh, God, and I pray more than all, Lord God, for covering off your children. Oh, God, we are dependent upon you, Lord Jesus, for we can do nothing by ourselves. We recognize that souls are dying without you, Lord Jesus. And we want to do all that we can so that we can share this gospel message with them. Bless us now, we pray, God. Bless our pastor who will be teaching us. Bless everyone who will join their God. We are committing ourselves in your hands. We are totally dependent on you, for we recognize our limitations, and we know you are able to do above what we can ask or think. So we claim the victory right now in Jesus' name. Praise God. Bless the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Praise God. Bless God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We give you thanks. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Under the Old Testament, you know, I think about this time, <laughs> a sacrifice would have been offered, Amen, evening awesome. sacrifice, Amen. praise the Lord Jesus. The Lord. We give God thanks that we are able to be here again in Bible study, Amen. praise the Lord, greeting Minister Drisdale and my sisters I see, the children, my brother, who have come. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I just give God the glory. I just give God the glory. And the honor due to his holy name. Hallelujah. I just feel like lifting my hands and giving God the glory. You know, he has delivered us from so many things. Hallelujah. We could have had a full-blown hurricane. Yes. But, but God knows best. And um, people thought that um, Portland would have feared the worst. But that's not true. Amen. I've seen little snapshots of bridge, bridges being, being out of place, yes. you know, and, and several inches of water and all of that. Hallelujah. So we, we thank God in all things. We are told to give God thanks. Praise the, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Welcome, welcome to everyone virtually and physically very nice to, to have you again hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord god has brought us the kingdom for such a time as this and we do give him thanks praise the lord we're going to read from the book of saint john chapter 3 1 through 15 praise the lord jesus can we stand? Hallelujah. There was a man of a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, 
for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time in his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and you receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Praise the Lord Jesus. We give God thanks for the written word that has been read. Thank you. You, you may be seated. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. We would like to consider... The thought, even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. We could have read from verse to verse 21 in your own time. You may do so. But the emphasis is really 14 and 15. Bless the Lord Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. The passage we have read is filled with what I would term important, interesting lessons. In order to appreciate the lifting up of Jesus Christ and the comparison made, we have to go all the way back to the Old Testament. Do you agree? Amen. Yes. Numbers in particular. Yes. Hallelujah. And as we go through, we will see why numbers. Yes. However, I would like to go back a bit further to Genesis, where we first encountered the serpent. Amen. Praise the Lord Jesus. Lord. And we know the serpent is a snake, isn't it? Amen. Yes. Adam and Eve were placed in the Garden of Eden by God himself. Yes, Hallelujah. This should be home for them. And it's so nice to have a home. And when we read about Eden, we see that it was a very beautiful home. You know, should be comfortable. All the needs of Adam and Eve were provided for. Praise the Lord Jesus. Genesis 2 and verse 15 shows that Adam had a responsibility. Hallelujah. 
Amen. That was to take care of the garden and to enjoy the fruit and everything that the garden had to offer except praise the Lord Jesus and I will fully stop at except for you to finish it. There was one exception. No fruit should be eaten from what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Oh Lord, help us. There was a consequence for doing so. That consequence was death, according to verse 17. Hallelujah. In the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. That's what God said, and God is not a liar. Hallelujah. In reading chapter 3 of Genesis, we get a brief description of the serpent which deceived Eve. Hallelujah. Scripture says, Genesis 3 verse 1, he was more subtle, or I could say more cunning, than any beast of the field. So it was classified as a beast. Any beast that was made. Eve was persuaded to eat of what is termed the forbidden tree or forbidden fruit, which he also offered to Adam. Amen. Hallelujah. This resulted in many, many conse consequences <laughs> that are affecting us today. Many consequences. As a result, everything was cursed including the serpent. Oh God. Following everybody? Amen. Let's take a look at the curse. Verses 14 to 15. And the Lord said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle above every beast of the field upon thy belly shalt thou go and dust shalt thou eat all the days of thy life and I shall put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. And remember that bruise, as used in the scripture, is not like what we use in everyday speech. What we really get is like the abrasion, you know, when, when the skin is injured, the outer skin, but we say it's a bruise. But a bruise is, is, is really very, very injurious, you know, could cause death. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. For example, you know, if some children, especially boys, when they fall and hit the head, we see this big thing and we say they get a cocoa. You know that term? A cocoa is re really a bruise. Because things happen under there and there's actually bleeding under there. So it should not be taken lightly. Remember that a coca is a bruise. It's bleeding under, 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 under the skin there. Well, that helps to clarify our understanding on the matter of bruising. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. So one... It's bruising the heel and the other is the head. 
Which is more dangerous? The head I would think. Amen. Many questions are generated from this passage. One, did Adam die immediately? You can answer that. What's your answer? Somebody says no, but I say yes and no. God said if you eat it in the day you're going to die. Hallelujah. Oh God, and there's a sophisticated explanation of that. About the day. But we won't deal with that in this lesson. Unless somebody asks. So I say yes and no. Spiritually, he died the very day. Being separated in fellowship with God. In all, Adam lived how long? 930 years. That's a long time. But he died in the day. Probably I should just say what I've learned about that day. Uh, it is said that a day, sometime in God, on God's calendar, is what? I didn't hear. A thousand years. All right? So Adam didn't live to see a thousand years. So he died within the day. <laughs> That's man's explanation. Now, the serpent didn't act on its own. He was really used by the devil. Someone once said the devil borrowed his body. <laughs> yes, he was used as an instrument of the devil. And, and, and I think we, we recognize many times when we have some difficulties with other persons. That is not the person so much, but the spirit behind the person which is of the devil. Oh, yes. So the serpent was used as an instrument of the devil who was in rebellion and a fallen state. Yes. I, I was trying to do a little research on, on th th those things. And it's, it's a lot. It's really a lot on which all of us should inform ourselves. You know, that went on before Genesis, which says in the beginning. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us. In the curse from God, with the serpent going on its belly, seemed to suggest that it was made upright. Huh? Upright like I'm standing upright now. Because the, the God said they're going to go on the belly. Says believe that it was an upright creature. The bruising goes beyond the serpent and referred to Satan himself. Are we following? Hopefully. So the reference, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Takes us back to the book of Numbers, Old Testament, Numbers chapter 21, which records aspects of the moving out or the exodus of the children of Israel from Egypt to Canaan. Verse number four states that as Israel journeyed, the people became much discouraged. Not a little discouraged, but much discouraged 
because of the way. Oh Lord, help us. Hallelujah. As a result, hallelujah, they spoke against God and Moses. Amen. Oh Lord, may God help us never to speak against God or his servants for that matter. <laughs> Especially we know, you know, these people have been put in place by the Lord. We have got to put a watch upon our, 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 our mouths and, and tame our tongue. Be careful. Those things can really act against us. So they murmured against God and Moses. Let us take note of what, some of what I think. Because I, I think they said more than what has been written. Hallelujah. Yes, listen to the part of their dissatisfaction and their complaint. Wherefore have ye brought us up out of Egypt, O oh, glory to God, to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our souls loathe or hate this light bread. Imagine they said no bread. So they, they, they wouldn't say that they didn't rate the bread. <laughs> you see what I mean? They said there's no bread. Because they didn't count what they were getting as bread. Yes. Lord, help us, Jesus. Please, Lord, please. God was much displeased. God can be displeased, you know. Yes. I think years ago, I did a lesson on I don't know, it's personalities of God, something like, or human qualities of God, something like that. Yes. That God can laugh. Yes. Amen. God can be angry yes. and, all, and, and all of that. So at this time, God was displeased. Yes. When you are displeased, when we are displeased, sometimes people can see it in our faces. You know? Our faces, like a mirror, reflect what we are feeling on the inside. So God was displeased. Let us remember that Moses was called by God. Hallelujah. Moses was about his business, we know, looking after Jethro's sheep in the wilderness. God manifested himself as, as this burning bush. When Moses, the scripture said, turned aside to see God called him out of the burning bush and spoke with him concerning delivering Israel from Egypt so we know that he was divinely called he didn't take this upon himself and do you believe that God is still calling people today? Yes. I think so I believe so so God gave direction to Moses. So what he was doing was not of himself. It was coming from God. The Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The evidence of God's leading was visible. How? Yes? Yes, pillar of cloud by day, a pillar of fire by night. So it is said that um, in the day, the desert is usually very, very hot. And so they got AC. <laughs> the cloud cooled them down. In the night, things changed. And it was cold. So God gave them warmth. And also, most um, wild animals are kept away by fire. Amen. Hallelujah. Lord, the Lord provided that. So, it was evident. It was not just Moses, but God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because of the murmuring and complaining, God sent fiery serpents among the people. I believe the serpents were there all along. 
But they did not show. But, but when the, the, the complaints began, that restraining power of God was lifted. And so they were exposed to all these things. May God help us. Amen. These serpents were not just running up and down. Hallelujah. They bit people and much persons died as a result of that. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. The people recognized that, that this was the hand of God against them. This, this was judgment. So what they did? Hmm? Yes, they were punished by God. Verse 7, so they came to Moses confessing. I want to let us know that confession works. When you're wrong, you're wrong. And never you feel too old, you know, too high, too matured to confess your wrongs. Amen. In fact, the New Testament tells us to confess our faults one to another. Someone pointed out, he didn't say confess your sins. You confess your sins to God. Well, if you're not careful, faults can be turned into sin. Oh, Jesus, help us. So, they came to Moses confessing. And they hit the nail on the head. We have sinned. Amen. Yes. Some of us just have sin pent up in, in, in one box. But here, they complained, they murmured against God and against Moses. They, they were dissatisfied with, with, with God's provision. So they recognized that it's sin. So they confessed. Amen. We have sinned. We have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Thank God for the recognition that, that, you know, we can see ourselves and see where we have erred, where we have gone wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. So the request was, pray for us. Pray unto the Lord that he'll take away the serpents from us. Very specific. Trouble was a serpent, so take them away. And, and, they didn't realize then, I see, in that dispensation that they could approach God for themselves. They had to approach God through someone else. So they went to the leader who had that direct line, as it were, to God. And so you pray for us. Ask God to take away the serpents. Amen. The Lord. Although Moses, you know, was spoken against, Yet he had the grace to pray for the very people who were abusing him and accusing him. And we too should have that kind of a spirit that, that, that we don't have all, the scripture calls it, against the brethren. So Moses prayed for the people. Hallelujah. The Lord didn't just Chase away the serpents. Hallelujah. But he gave Moses instructions. Saying, make a fiery serpent. Not a serpent of fire, you know. But something that would, would sort of glow, I think. You know, that would be visible. Whether day or, or, or night. I'm just trying to use my imagination. Set it upon a pole. Yes. All right, rise it above. Yes. Heads of everybody. Yes. And it shall come to pass that everyone that is bitten, when he looketh what, upon it, shall live. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Simple, the very thing that hurt me will cure me. Lord Jesus, help us. God knows exactly what he is doing. So, Moses made a serpent of brass 
Remember? <laughs> Everything they needed could be found among them. Because the Egyptians had just given and given and given and, you know, they had given everything. Because, because um, scripture said they spoiled the Egyptians. And it was prophesied they would come out with this wealth. So they thought they were there. Huh? Just like that working for nothing, but God saved it up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes, so they had brass. Could use some of that to make that serpent. Put it on a pole. Amen. So, Moses made a serpent of brass, put it on a pole, and it came to pass that if a serpent had bitten any man, any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, he lived. That verse 9. Whoever it was. And, and I have shared many times about that um, artist's impression that I saw, you know, with that woman with the baby. Yes. Like it, it could be a baby not more than three months old. Yes. But the baby was, was bitten. Yes. And that baby could not have looked voluntarily. The brain was not that developed to say that. And that mother took that baby's head and made sure it focused on the serpent. How are you focusing your children? Hallelujah. Yes, yeah, some of us apostolic, we really spoil the children in the wrong direction, you know. But a message I heard years ago said, spoil them for Christ. Spoil them for Christ. Thank you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. So we go back to the, to, the, to the reading that we had for the beginning. Jesus, in speaking to Nicodemus, St. John 3 and 14, referred to the serpent being lifted up as himself Jesus. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. And we know the Old Testament reference. The death of Jesus upon the cross is a fulfillment of this. The cross lifted up. Jesus made reference to being lifted up again to show how he would die. And this is in John 12 and verse 32, which says, If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This statement of Jesus adds clarity to what he had said in chapter 3. Praise the Lord Jesus. Let's give God thanks. Praise the name of Jesus. By this, we should recognize that our redemption hinges on the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Without the cross, without his death, no salvation. The symbol or what we call the type in the book of Numbers demanded that everyone who was bitten and needed to be cured had to look at the brazen serpent. It was an individual affair. Amen. Nobody could look for you. And you couldn't look for anybody. Oh Jesus, help us. I thought about this thing and, and used my imagination. And I said... People were being beaten all over. Yes. Not just one little segment of the encampment, but, but, but all over. But there were not brazen serpents in several locations. There was one and only one brazen serpent. 
So whether you were far or near, you had to look or die. Glory to God Almighty. Hallelujah. Yes. Don't tell me how so many million and that impossible. My God can just magnify things that, you, you, you know. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, I had a relative who said she stay on a porch somewhere in St. Margaret's Bay and saw white clothes online in Cuba. So, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. God can make impossible things possible. Praise the Lord. Yes. So people were being beaten all over the camp, but there was not serpents in several locations. As I said earlier, only one. And it must work. Being bitten by a poisonous serpent symbolizes being affected and afflicted. And I chose those words carefully. Affected and afflicted by sin. Yes, sin bites. But by faith, hallelujah, we can see Jesus. And the meaning of the cross where blood was shed for our redemption. Praise the Lord. That's what the serpent on the pole symbolizes. Death of Jesus Christ. We look to Jesus with faith. Faith believing that our sins will be removed when we repent and we know it, being baptized in water in the name of Jesus, and receive the Holy Ghost. Bless the Lord Jesus. That one place to look. As Hebrews 12 and verse 2 says. Looking unto Jesus. Hallelujah. The author. And finisher. Of our faith. He endured the cross. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Now that one place to look. I took time out to emphasize, you know, using my imagination, that this serpent, it wasn't transferred from place to place. It was in one location. So that one place to look is not a geographical, geographical spot. Not a spot picked out on some island, you know, on some high mountain or what. But it's a person. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people, they go to mountains and they go to rivers. We know that. You have got to go even once in a lifetime. I won't call any name now if you don't know do your own research. Praise the Lord Jesus. It's a place on earth that you have to go. Hallelujah. But for us, by faith, we just look to the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter made it plain on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. Acts 2.38. And, and I said I'm going to make a statement here that may cause heads to turn. Acts 2.38 is not the message that Peter preached. Okay, you all know that. Yes, you have heard it enough times. But it was what I call the culmination of the message. When everything was, was just, you know, brought together. Hallelujah. Peter preached Jesus. Quoting Joel, who emphasized the Holy Spirit and the end time phenomena such as changes of the sun and moon. Mm -hmm. Acts 2, 17, 21. Hope was given in verse 21. Hallelujah. And I love it. And it shall come to pass afterwards that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Hallelujah. That's how we look. 
Songwriter said, look to the Lamb of God, for he alone is able to save you. So just look to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. As Moses lifted a serpent in the wilderness, must the Son of Man be lifted up? Hallelujah. Oh God, the Romans thought that, 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 that they were just um, killing another human being because the Romans were in charge of Israel. So the Jews could not have carried out that and that wasn't their, their way of execution either. Their mode of execution was stoning. The Romans were in charge and, and, and their mode was crucifixion. I was told it's the most horrible death you can think of. Hallelujah. But Jesus had to fulfill that type. Hallelujah. Glory to God Almighty. And he hinted it to Nicodemus. Thank you God. That man must become a believer because when he looked and saw with his very eyes that Jesus was lifted up and he had said it to him earlier. This is how I'm going to die. Thank you Jesus. Thank you Jesus. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. So I love it. And it shall come to pass afterwards that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Peter, having introduced Jesus, spoke of his death, burial, and resurrection with reference from David's prophecies. And you can read for yourself, you know, not suffer is only one to see corruption and soul in hell and all of that. Peter concluded by saying, Therefore, let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made that same Jesus, whom you have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Verse 36. Hallelujah. Having heard Peter's preaching and having felt the conviction and I had evil condemnation, we killed the man who came to redeem us. You know, the question was asked, men and brethren, you know, what are we going to do now to get out of this dilemma? What shall we do? Hallelujah. Peter's response, which was recorded in Acts, what? 2.38 to 39. We all know that. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, your conviction and my conviction, it's all because of Jesus. Jesus was lifted up on a cross for our redemption. Amen. Praise the name. It's not, a, it's not a fairy tale. This is not Jack and the Beanstalk. Huh? Beanstalk came up overnight and, and, and you know, was strong enough and all of that to be, to be climbed and so on. Oh, glory to God Almighty. Hallelujah. In John... 12, 32, Jesus himself said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And you know, we come to church and we feel good and we sing, you know, lift Jesus higher. Huh? But we should take time out to educate people that, that the real lifting up is the cross. Amen. Yes, we praise him and we magnify his name and all of that. That is good. So he said, I, if I be lifted up, I'll do what? Draw all men unto me. Amen. So, so we are the people. He was lifted up. That part was fulfilled. Yes. And he will draw all men. Where are they? Where are they? People's refusal to come to Jesus is not because they are not drawn. I've examined it and I've come to that conclusion because Jesus said he will draw them. Yes. Amen. Yes. So if they don't come, it's not because they are not drawn. Yes. Why? But because of rebellion. Yes. 
and stubbornness as well as a big word procrastination procrastination tomorrow and tomorrow and next year and when I'm married and when I'm settled all sort of things they keep putting off putting off putting off the way has been made saints friends we has been made for man to receive eternal life. The text says in verse 15, Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting or eternal life. Your belief should, should urge you or spur you Unto repentance. Unto baptism. Unto receiving. The gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. If you believe. Do something about it. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Alright. I have a few minutes left. And. And. I, I really added a, a, a little broader. <laughs> and this is for you to think about. Amen. By what means are men drawn? Mm. That's for you to answer. Tell me. Preaching. All right, I heard preaching. Worship. Worship. Testimony. Testimony what? I didn't hear that. Run out and ready. By what means are people drawn? By what? Songs. 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 We heard that up here. It's my songs. Yes. Your lifestyle. Lifestyle. Miracles. Miracles. Okay. I know somebody would say, now you're thinking. And I've heard, I just jotted this down afterwards, and there, there are many others. We heard, we heard about hearing the word, and you can hear the word in song, in reading the Bible, in preaching. You know, we hear the word many, many ways. Huh? And you mentioned the, the, the example, I, I call that living examples. Amen. Right? And there's one I have not heard at all. Inner conviction. You know? Nobody don't preach to you or anything, but just something within your soul, within your spirit. You know? Wrenching it. There's another one I didn't hear. Signs of the time. Amen. Phenomenal. You know, all over the place can say, you know, God really coming, you know. Oh, Lord, help us. And, and, um, personal revelation from dreams, visions, reading your Bible. Nobody preached to you. You, 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 you know, you're, you're, you're just going through one of these turning the leaves of the Bible and finding a scripture and something start up. Some people even cry. You, you know, you dream something and so real that it did something to you and some people have more than dream. They have, they have vision. Lord, help us. Hallelujah. Some people are drawn and I can't forget, so I just love the sound. The heavens declare. Hallelujah. Oh, God Almighty, Jesus. So, so, preaching is very important, yes, testimony and all of that. But the life that you live is so important. People can be drawn to the Lord by your good example. Thank you for that one, sister. Really appreciate it. Bless the Lord Jesus. So, we have got to be careful. You know, I am always so concerned about people who are saved and um, sometimes they fall offline 
you know, and cause a poor reputation of, of, of the church. But like Israel going to Moses and say, we have sinned. Amen. Amen. So pray for us. We have sinned. Amen. You, you know, don't, don't get on the other side when you're wrong. Yeah. Be humble and, and, you know, seek the Lord. It's, it's, it's a way to go. Praise the Lord Jesus. Any question on, on what I've said? Any comment at all? Amen. What was the topic for those who are coming in after? Even so, must the Son of Man be lifted up. Drawn from the book of John 3, 1 to 15. In particular, verses 14 and 15. If I be lifted up, and that, that is referring to his death on the cross. Prophetic utterance. Amen. Bless the Lord Jesus. Thank you for coming and for sharing. And God willing, we, we look forward to another Bible study. Praise the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Just lift your hands and, and, and just magnify your Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. I'm going to invite you to stand because I, I am just burdened down about praying, you know, praying for our brother, who, our brother pastor, pastor for Lucy. Um, he's very ill at this time and his wife not doing well either, we're told. And... Um, you know, with this Delta variant, variant so, so, you know, rampant in Jamaica. We know that prayer changes things and people have been praying, but we're going to add one more. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I mean, seriously pray, saints. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, I stretch my hand. No other help I know, Lord. We give you thanks that you have helped us to share your word, to break the bread of life, on why you died on the cross of Calvary. We know you're a prayer hearing God. And Lord, we are praying at this time for our past, our brother in the faith. Prayer has been requested for him. Hallelujah. You know him, Lord Jesus. Oh, God. There's nothing too hard for you, Lord Jesus. We are asking for your mercy right now. For your healing hand. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus. Comfort his wife. Comfort the saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But in the midst of our prayers, we have got to include not my will, but thine be done. You have done it before, Lord, and you are able to do it again. With your stripes are we healed. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for our country. Ah, people at wits and corner. But unto you, O oh Lord, lift up our souls. We trust in you, God Almighty. Oh, God, deliverance will come. We are praying, oh God, one more time for a miracle. Lord Jesus, help us, my God Almighty, not to give up. Oh, not to curse in our hearts and say, where is God? But like those Israelites, God, we confess that we have sinned, we have strayed. God, we have not been the people you want us to be. I will come, Lord, asking of you one more time, Lord Jesus. Ah, oh, God Almighty, pour out, Lord Jesus, your healing virtue, Lord, and individuals, and on this land of Jamaica. 
protect your people, God, we pray. Just help us to honor you, Lord Jesus, and to give you the praise and the glory. Lord, I present your petitions before you this evening. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 God bless you. Thank you for sharing.